in 2022, around 1.4 million battery electric vehicles will be produced in the United States of America. This will represent around 10% of the total market for light passenger vehicles. And this number will almost certainly double in 2023. The growth rate internationally is even more impressive. More than 6.5 million battery electric vehicles were sold in 2021, which is more than double the volumes that were sold in 2020. And that number is more than triple the volume sold in 2019. This is explosive growth, and it leaves many investors wondering how much longer such growth can continue. Will it continue to grow exponentially, or will we reach some sort of equilibrium? in which electric vehicles remain confined to their market segment and growth starts to plateau. Of equal importance is the price that people will be willing to pay for an electric vehicle. In the USA, the average sales price for an electric vehicle is around $55,000, while in Europe they are a bit cheaper, with the average price being around $49,000. Well, the best way to determine how much room there still is for growth is to look at what is motivating the transition from internal combustion engines in the first place. And in this video, I plan to do exactly that, to give you my top picks as the primary catalysts for increased adoption of electric vehicles. Now, before I continue, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel as I intend to turn my attention again to energy production, distribution, and raw materials, because I believe these are areas where we are going to find real investable opportunities in this exciting growth industry. Catalyst number one, the market is bigger than we think. Around 75 million vehicles were sold around the world in 2019. And this number is down from 2017, when almost 81 million vehicles were sold. Now, it is really difficult to get consensus on the actual numbers. Some agencies report these figures to be up to 10 million vehicles higher. But I have chosen the lower number because it still supports my case. Now we should use 2019 because it is probably a more accurate reflection of the industry market size, given that the industry is still trying to recover from the COVID disruptions. So that means battery electric vehicle sales are still only less than 10% of the total addressable market in terms of new vehicles. But this is just the new sales. It is estimated that there are over 1 billion passenger vehicles currently driving the streets around the world. So as 75 million new vehicles enter into this global pool of vehicles, it doesn't translate to 75 million vehicles exiting the pool and landing on the scrap heap. 75 million vehicles adds about 7% new vehicles to the pool. And I'm guessing only about 20 to 30 million or so end up on the scrap heap. So the pool of vehicles in the world today probably grows around 4 or 5% a year. So globally, we can expect that each year, around 7% of all vehicle owners will opt for a new vehicle for whatever reason. Now imagine if only 1% of the remaining 1 billion vehicle owners decide to opt in on the electric vehicle revolution. That will translate to an extra 10 million vehicles sold per year. And what if 10% of them decide? Well, now you can see where I'm going with these numbers. The point I want to make here is that if adoption accelerates, then we will see total new vehicle sales climb considerably higher than what the 2017 peaks demonstrated. And the reason for this is that there could be an increased demand by the used vehicle segment transitioning to battery electric vehicles. And that demand could easily outstrip supply in the used car lots. Now, why do I call this a catalyst? Well, with a potential market that big, you can be certain that every automotive marketer on earth is going to be trying to segment this and to position products to target it. Once the advertising and the positioning kicks in, we should see accelerated growth follow. Catalyst number two, the oil price. There is no one out there that can deny that it is now becoming prohibitively expensive to fill your vehicles with gasoline or diesel. It is a painful expense. We put it in our vehicles and we burn it. It is a commodity, a necessary expense that we would prefer to avoid. Now we have been dealing with oil prices all of our adult lives. This is nothing new, but when we are presented with an alternative that is cheaper and that we can literally generate ourselves, then every single time gasoline prices go up, it is an in-our-face prod to ask the question, why are we doing this again? But it is not only the dent in our wallets that will prod us into the EV camp. The oil industry themselves have not exactly lined themselves up with hugs and kisses from the general public. They are some of the worst pariahs in industry, 
Some of them are perceived to be the advocates for war in some regions. And every time we feel the pinch in our wallets, we perceive there is a fat corporate profit being made somewhere by an industry which is by and large hated in communities. Catalyst number three, government incentives and controls. You cannot ignore these. Tax credits are obvious, but I believe a greater catalyst comes from more and more stringent emission control standards. China has recently in 2021 implemented stage six in their emissions control standards, which is the most aggressive in the world. Now, while this is predominantly targeted at new vehicle sales, the challenge for the average road user is that cities like Beijing limit the number of license plates that can be issued, and they prioritize vehicles that comply to emissions controls. Cities in Europe do something similar. Around 230 cities in Europe have adopted the low emission zone policy, which prohibits access into these zones unless your vehicle complies to the latest emission standards. Personally, I think it is only a matter of time when Europe bans internal combustion engines into cities completely. And when nations set target dates for the transition to electric vehicles, it's kind of hard to ignore that. I mean, that is a pretty solid line in the sand. Catalyst number four, government trade balances. This is kind of related to the previous catalyst, but I thought it was important to understand why governments are so on board with electric vehicle transitioning. Outside of the obvious climate change pledges, I think there is a financial reason governments will continue to push for the transition. Now, oil-rich nations might not experience this catalyst quite as much as countries that are net importers of oil. This is because when countries import oil, it reflects as a trade import, and it has to be balanced with trade exports. They buy this stuff, then they burn it, and in some cases, they create goods in the process which gets exported. Now, in order to maintain a certain status quo in the currency exchange, countries adopt a currency reserve so that they can buy or sell currency as needed to ensure that the currency remains stable. Now, if you remove, say, a $50 billion oil import cost, you can free up currency reserves. It will also translate to an increase in GDP. But the impact is even more profound when we consider the inflationary impact of the oil price. Oil touches almost every single part of most value chains. Component or complete product delivery happens at almost every step of the way. And the fuel bill is a cost of sale. A cost of sale is a deductible, and so on and so forth. There is a financial benefit to removing oil from the equation. It removes a contributor to inflation, it helps alleviate trade imbalances, and it should contribute to increased GDP and tax revenues. Catalyst number five, geopolitical de-risking. Oil is such an insanely strategic asset to any country that it is almost certainly a political bargaining chip at any national negotiating table. Securing a reliable, steady supply is of paramount importance to any economy. How many wars have been fought over oil? It was literally the primary strategic objective for the Axis powers in World War II. If countries that are net importers of oil can eliminate their dependency on the stuff, then that has to put them in more favorable situations geopolitically. Catalyst number six, convenience and innovation. I don't think we have begun to experience the convenience of charging versus refueling an internal combustion engine. A supercharger station doesn't require a 10,000 gallon chemical storage facility or the complicated logistics infrastructure needed to keep it full. No, even a 7-Eleven can simply put a charging station outside in their parking lot and cash in on the electric vehicle energy sale. Municipalities can get in on the action too by positioning themselves to sell you the electricity for your vehicle. This is a new revenue stream for them. We might not be experiencing it just yet, but once charging stations become ubiquitous, they will dramatically simplify our lives. They will be everywhere. As for technology innovation, well, there is so much on offer here. We have autonomous driving as what Tesla is pioneering, or independent motors on each wheel as Rivian has demonstrated, giving a whole range of applications for improved maneuverability, or the use cases for a massive 100 kilowatt battery itself like what Ford has demonstrated with the F-150. I mentioned in my previous videos that disruptive innovation creates markets. I think this is going to be the case. For example, I think that autonomous driving will resolve the issue many face of where to park their vehicles, thereby motivating more to purchase one. I think that in much the same way that Smart revolutionized the subcompact market segment in Europe, this concept can be taken even further with electric vehicles. I can envision a scenario where people would certainly have two vehicles, a subcompact for driving around to work, and a family car for evenings and weekends. 
which can be parked far out where parking is cheaper and more abundant, and automatically hailed when needed. I can see scenarios where the batteries will become so incredibly useful that contractors will have two or three pickup trucks. I'm just throwing random ideas out here. The point I wanted to make is that there is so much room for creativity here by a vehicle which is no longer constrained by the design criteria of the internal combustion engine. Catalyst number seven, systematic destruction of all the restraints. Electric vehicles are systematically destroying all the counter arguments against their adoption. Production costs are declining rapidly thanks to the incredible drop in battery costs. In my previous video, I pointed out how Tesla has demonstrated how much more profitable EVs are to make, and that this metric alone will probably persuade all manufacturers to ditch the less profitable internal combustion engine portfolios. Range is improving, and supercharger technology is addressing the long distance concerns. Consumer resistance is fading. Tesla is no longer the lone crusader. Companies like Ford have repurposed their most iconic brands, and the advertising spend on electric vehicles is accelerating even if the companies doing the advertising don't have a product yet. So in conclusion, how big can this industry get? Well, I think there are over 1 billion vehicles out there that need replacing. And the only thing that is holding the adoption back is the pace of production. But once accelerated, I think that electric vehicle sales can exceed and sustain 100 million vehicles per annum for a decade at least. I also think that disruptive innovation creates markets and that new niche market segments are going to open up. We are no longer looking at a one-for-one -one replacement here. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this video, please hit the like button to support the channel. And if you're interested, I have posted a link to this video here, where I assess how margin is going to persuade auto manufacturers to ditch the internal combustion engine. And I posted this video here to explain how incredibly difficult auto manufacturers are going to find it to keep pace with Tesla. I look forward to presenting to you again soon.